For those that don't know, the deep web, also known as the deep net, invisible web or hidden web, is a hidden part of the internet that cannot be accessed by standard search engines such as Google, Yahoo and Bing. It can be accessed using networks such as Tor, Freenet and I2P. Within the deep web, there are websites such as Silk Road where you can buy fake IDs, passports, credit cards and any drug imaginable. There are also black markets where you can buy guns and military equipment. There are also sites where you can hire hitmen. Now there is a dark side of the deep web. It contains a lot of gore and disturbing content I won't even mention. Now you've got the basic knowledge of the deep web, you'll be able to understand these stories much easier. Here are 5 disturbing deep web stories. Number 5. Kill My Husband This started late 2013. I remember because I was going through one of the hardest times of my life mentally and emotionally. My parents were going through a really heated divorce. I knew about the deep web but never checked it out. During the time, the news headlines were about the original Silk Road being shut down by the FBI. It got me interested so I done some research and asked friends if they had ever been on the deep web. One of my friends told me how to access it using Tor and to be careful on it because of the shady stuff and the attention that was on it at the time. Once I got home from school, I decided to give it a go. I watched a few tutorials then downloaded Tor and voila, I was on the deep web. I checked out the copycats of Silk Road but didn't purchase anything. Drugs don't really interest me, I haven't even tried a cigarette. There are drugs everywhere, from MDMA to heroin and even random pills that were titled with just numbers. There was also a site that was just a marketplace for weapons. They sold military style weapons like AK-47s and sniper rifles. So far what I'd seen on the deep web was quite interesting. I turned off my computer as I had homework to do. I only remember this because I was working on a book report of Animal Farm and I was finding it quite difficult. I kept checking out the deep web for a while but would mainly only browse the same sites just because I was scared of digging deeper because of the disgusting sites I was warned about. I enjoyed going on the deep web though. It kind of helped me escape reality for a bit because it was interesting. During the time, my mum and dad were going through a really bad divorce. They would argue constantly. My mum had packed my dad's bags and told him to leave but he wouldn't go. They couldn't be in the same room as each other so dinner was really awkward. I don't really want to go into too much detail but my mum was pretty sure that my dad had cheated. She said she had proof. My dad would always deny it. I wasn't sure who to believe, but yeah, it was pretty rough living there. One day I decided to dig deeper. At first I went to the hidden wiki and some of the links didn't work, but soon I was on some really strange porn sites. After a few hours of just coming across really strange porn and just strange sites in general, I came across a hitman site. It was kind of like a forum where people would ask hitmen to murder people. Most were charging about 78 to 90 bitcoins, which is about 20,000 to 25,000. I came across a post titled KILL MY HUSBAND in all caps. I checked it out. There was a brief description on why she wanted her husband killed, saying he cheated, he's a scum and so on. There was a description of the man, 6 foot, white, crew cut, has the name Garcia tattooed on his left arm. As soon as I saw the description of the tattoo, I immediately thought of my dad. He has Garcia tattooed on his left arm, it was his mother's maiden name and he was very close to her. I kind of brushed it off and didn't think too much of it. I then scrolled down and the poster had uploaded an image. It was of a man in his car but the face was blurred out and so was the license plate. The car was identical to my dad's. I got a feeling of dread and just felt sick. I was contemplating whether my mother could have actually put the post up. I tried to go to sleep that night, but I couldn't, I just kept going over the thought in my head. The next day I asked my mum about the deep web. As it was still recent in the news I thought it'd be suitable to talk about it. I asked her if she'd ever heard of it and she said she'd seen something about it on the news but didn't really know anything about it. I then steered the conversation towards hitmen. I said yeah, I heard it's a really crazy place where people can buy drugs and hire hitmen. She was just like, oh really? I was really tempted to call her out, but instead I just went with the risks. I was telling her the risk of the person who set the hit up of getting caught was high. She must have known I was onto her just because I was questioning her about the topic so much. I checked in on the post frequently and it was removed shortly after. My dad's car got wrecked by someone after the post was removed. 
His windows got smashed and his tires were slashed. I think my mum got somebody she knows to do it. So yeah, that's my story. My mum almost had my dad murdered using the deep web. I've never told my dad or anyone else about it. And now in 2015, my parents are no longer together and I live with my mum but visit my dad on the weekends. I can't really think of the same of my mum anymore since I seen that post. Number 4. Homeless Organs I was introduced to the deep web quite recently. While browsing, I saw the usual drugs and whatnot. I then came across a blog with a hyperlink on it. I clicked the hyperlink and it took me to a website that sells human organs. It didn't seem too messed up compared to the other horrific things I'd seen on the deep web. On the site's description page, it described how they got the organs. They would find homeless people, kidnap them, then take them to a makeshift doctor's office where doctors, most likely some nutjob who wants to be a doctor, would then put the homeless people in cages. It said they had a variety of homeless people, so must have had a room just filled with homeless people in cages. They would then let the homeless person out the cage, lead them to the doctor, the doctor would then kill them and harvest their organs. They explained their justification was that the homeless people won't be missed and the police won't come looking for them. Number 3. 5611 I'd been surfing the deep web for a while. About 3 weeks ago, I decided I want to find the grittiest parts of the deep web, a place I like to call the House of Horrors. In order to find it, I had to do lots of talking around and getting information from chat rooms and taking lots of notes. I even had to make a couple of phone calls to some really shady individuals. It was not a comfortable experience. By the end of this, I gathered enough contacts and notes to go to the next level of the deep web. I first came across a site that was called Centrix. It was a marketplace much like Silk Road. It had subcategories for snuff films, all variety of drugs in bulk, fake IDs, passports, you name it. There was also various illegally obtained memberships for Netflix and several other sites. Within the Centrix chat room, I managed to obtain links to dig even deeper. The next site I went on was called Brink Warehouse. The site wasn't too horrific to an extent. It was a virtual warehouse of guides, notes, leaked documents and torrented books. Not too bad, right? Wrong. Some of the guides were how to make drone-based homemade explosives and how to kidnap women in their sleep. There was also guides on how to gain people's bank information and top secret US military documents. Can you just imagine if some psycho gets their hands on them, the damage that they could do? The next site I went on is where it starts to get creepy. I consider it the darkest place of the deep web. The site didn't display a name. I managed to get there by clicking on a link that one of my contacts sent me. The username of the person that sent it to me was Francestern344. We met in a chat room and the topic of snuff films somehow came up. We talked for a while and then continued in a private chat. We talked for about 20 minutes about snuff films. He then sent me a link. It just said 5611. I clicked it and it took me to a site. I had to sign up for the site, then fill out a questionnaire, then have a one-on-one -on -one chat with one of the admins of the site. So yeah, it's pretty exclusive. They let me access the site. The site's design was bland and blocky with a pure white background. Everything was close together and in the top right corner, there was options to log out add funds to my balance and a small wallet emoticon with a balance near it. It kinda looked like them porn video chat rooms. In the center of the screen, there was a single row of still images going down with titles and a small description under them. The first still image was a table with various blades and blunt weapons on it. The title was 24 year old F sleeping sug death. By the side of it, there was a price tag of two bitcoins and a timer in green that was counting down. Underneath the timer, in the same green font, it said 78 out of 100. I then realized this was a paid snuff site. People would livestream themselves murdering people and viewers could choose how the person was killed. Then once the total amount of Bitcoin set was reached, the person would be murdered. The one under this was titled Quick Watch Homeless 0.22 Bitcoin Large View Low Quality. It reminded me of them attention-seeking YouTube titles, but it seemed to be working. The counter next to it was at 783 out of 100, and it was rising rapidly. Once the timer got to zero, I scrolled my mouse over the still, and it began to play. 
I won't go into too much detail, but I was in a Middle Eastern country. The camera was pointing at a skinny homeless man that was just minding his own business laying on the floor. Three men then ran over to him and murdered him. I turned off my computer after this and never returned to the deep web. I destroyed all my notes and my contact list. Number 2 Pink Meth I was introduced to the deep web by my friend. He showed me how to access it, use it, and everything else. From the moment he showed me, I was hooked. I just couldn't believe this amount of information was hidden on the web. I never tried to buy anything on it, as I was too afraid to. When I first started browsing on my own, I was greeted by a blank page. My friend then sent me a link to something called the Hidden Wiki. It was a page with a bunch of links. I checked out most of them. There was mainly black markets that sold weapons, drugs, and explosives. There were a few sites that sold exotic animals. I saw someone selling a Siberian tiger. There was also sites that sold logins to people's PayPal accounts and sold counterfeit money. But for the most part, the deep web was just filled with porn. It was everywhere. I came across a site called Pink Meth. It mainly looked like an amateur porn site. I had pictures of women mostly nude, but sometimes just half naked or in bikinis. Underneath the picture albums of the women, there were blue links. I clicked on one of them, and it took me to the Facebook page of the girl in the pictures. There was also a list of her name, address, friends, family, and IP address. Pretty much everything. They had this for every single one of the girls in the pictures. I noticed that someone could wreck girls' lives of this. I'd done some extra research, and found out that some people had found their co-workers on the site. I'm not sure how people got the photos, maybe ex-boyfriends uploaded them, or maybe they were hacked. All I've got to say is women, think twice before sending nudes because you could end up on the site. Then some random weirdo will have seen you nude and will know your address, friends, family, and everything else, so you never know what could happen. Number 1. Shadow Web How well do you know the internet? Until two weeks ago, I thought I knew it pretty well. I spend a good portion of my day browsing Reddit and 4chan, and I'm always up to date with the latest memes. I've been browsing the internet since the early days of it, and have never seen anything worse than what I saw on a shadow web. This is how it began. I work as a gas station attendant. A guy would come in and buy $20 to $50 worth of Ucash vouchers every day. Ucash vouchers are like a prepaid card with a code on them. It's like e-currency. You can use it to purchase things online if the site accepts the vouchers. One day, he came in and bought $300 worth of vouchers. The curiosity got the better of me, and I asked him what they were for. He replied with, Have you heard of the shadow web? I told him I hadn't. He paid for his vouchers, and then said, If you want to find out. He then got a card out of his pocket. It was the size of a business card. He got the pen from our counter and wrote something on it, and then placed it in my front shirt pocket. I forgot about it, then found it a few days later when doing laundry. I read it. It said shadow web, then brief bullet points on how to access the deep web, and a few links. I'm quite good on computers, so looked up the basics and managed to get on the deep web. I came across a load of porn and gore. There were also instructions on do-it-yourself bombs and cannibal chat rooms. I then spent about an hour reading up on leaked war documents on a site called Avenge.schweb. It was quite an interesting site and had many leaked documents. After digging deeper and clicking on any link I saw, I reached a place I wish I didn't. At first, I noticed the Ucash logo at the bottom of the page, indicating that paid services were available. The site was a livestream site. One of the titles had rape in them. It was a still image of a dungeon type thing. I wasn't sure if it was real or just roleplay, and didn't want to find out so I didn't click it. Others had snuff in a title, but most of them were in what looked like Japanese or Arabic. I clicked on one of the streams, and on the side of the video there was a chat box. I tried to chat, but it said I needed to log in first. I created an account, then tried it again. It then gave me the message saying, only the director is able to chat. Then in the chat box, it said Italian Goat has become the director. The show then properly started. A very skinny man with dark brown skin wearing a hockey mask appeared on camera. Then the screaming began. The man moved out the way, and behind him was a woman. She was blindfolded and tied to a chair with her hands behind her back. She was struggling to break free. The man then removed her blindfold. She made eye contact with the camera and must have realized what was happening because she started crying and begging. 
She sounded like she was speaking Arabic. It then popped up in a chat. Italian goat lay her sideways on the floor. The skinny man saw the message and then a second man came on screen. They started talking to each other in their language. They then laid her down on their side. Then more messages came through and they done as they was instructed. Italian goat, kick her in the stomach. Italian goat, kick her in the face. Italian goat, tell your friend to kick harder. I paid good money for this. The screams then began to get louder and louder and I kind of realized that this was actually happening. It hit me. I'm not watching a movie. This is a live stream. This is actually happening. I was in so much shock at this point. Then the message, Italian goat, now slit her throat came up. This made me feel really ill. I was panicking when I was about to turn off my computer. Then it said, Italian goat, no wait, not yet. This gave me a sigh of relief as I thought she was going to be spared. But then, Italian goat said, take out our eyes first. I immediately turned off my monitor. My stomach started turning over and I ran outside and vomited. I could hear the deafening screams coming from my computer. I noticed I didn't turn the speakers off. I was trying to compose myself as I still needed to vomit but I was desperate to turn the speakers off. I ended up just taking a socket out of the wall to shut the whole system down. So please, anyone who wants to access the deep web, take it from my experience and just don't do it. If you do, then don't be curious and do not dig deeper. Thank you so much for watching. Have you ever been on the deep web? If so, if you've got any stories, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to keep updated with our videos. Goodbye.